to try to bring you in an hour and 20 minutes what I have learned in several weeks of courses that I took um, uh, to improve my, my, the way that I work with Canvas. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to try to show you some tricks that will help you develop a more engaging course and one that students will be more motivated to participate. Uh, if you do have a synchronous uh, um, course, yes, you are interact interacting with your students on a, on a regular basis. But if you don't, because the students either don't show up to your um, sessions or because whatever the reason may be, um, all you can rely on is on the liveliness, liveliness of your Canvas course to make sure students are participating. So let's jump right into it and I'll tell you what we're going to go over today. We're going to learn the organization of your Canvas course. Uh, we're going to talk about some best practices used by people who I admire a lot, who are the instructors that uh, I took classes, courses with during the summer and also last year. So every year I take at least two or three courses in Canvas. And I tell you, there is always something else learned, new to learn. A Canvas is like a, a, it's a, it's a gift that keeps on giving. Um, also, we're going to talk so how to interact in Canvas. We know we're not interacting with people, but we're going to make our uh, content more interactive for, for the students to be able to be more engaged in your classes. Uh, we're going to also go op uh, about open source that the good news here, you do not need to start your course from scratch. Even though I had done that before, I tell you, I don't recommend. So we're going to talk about that as well. Uh, active learning, how you can make it fun, because active learning, as a lot of studies show, is students, after you give them your speech or your lecture, you want to develop activities that they will use those skills in a manner that it will make their learning, the foundation is stronger. So they will indeed be able to demonstrate to you that what you lecture, they were able to learn. And we're going to have a course, a tour, a tour of one of my courses from many years ago, and then a more current one after I have learned several things and I continue to learn. One of them being tabs within a page, which I thought it was fantastic. I'm not, I may not go into it that because you would have to know HTML, H, no, HTML. Uh, so, but we'll see what we have time today. And there is a bonus, a course design, which I'll talk to you at the end of it to make your life easier. So let's see how we start our course. Yay, yay, yay. So first thing we do when we start to design a course is to collect all your materials. Number one, of course, is your syllabus. Canvas do have a place in which you can just copy and then paste your, syllab your syllabus in that uh, area. Um, but also I wanted to uh, show you how you can make that a little more live and more interactive with your students. Um, rules, of course, you may have rules about your, your, your course, what to do, what not to do, um, including, including uh, guidelines for your assignments, what do you expect from your projects. Uh, also, the uh, I'm, I'm going too fast here. <laughs> also, um, uh, anything that you need to show them examples, right? Or uh, files, uh, templates, that is very important. Uh, you may have some PDFs, which I strongly suggest you as much as you can. Add pages to your can canvas instead of having an attachment as a PDF. That's going to be very important, particularly with accessibility which in itself is a course by itself, you know, it's just very, very deep, but I'll go over that as well. So here are some of the best practices, which we, for us first to learn our, to, to map the course. We start that by putting together the comp competencies and the student learning objectives. And those are the concepts, right? There are the concepts of your whole entire course. Um, and which th those are competencies that will be treated throughout the entire course. This is generally given to, to us by LACCD, 
uh, all our syllabus are required to have that. Um, from, for each of these concepts, that's where we are going to develop our activities, right? We're going to then include our resources. What is it that the students will need to complete those activities? Uh, one thing also that I found quite interesting in one of the courses that I review was the vocabulary. Sometimes you need to have a vocabulary for the particular module or chapter. Uh, you can create a page for that. Uh, and assessments, of course, you're going to need your quizzes, your written um, assignments, your projects, your PowerPoints, whatever that is that you're gonna, gonna um, ass assess your students on. Um, and then on the module level, uh, in general, what you have here is in each chapter of your books, for example, I am just going to make sure, um, you have what we call a module or a unit. So when you put together a certain, you put the concepts that you have, make sure you try to put the concepts together and kind of cluster them by likeliness, right? So you will, which concepts will be more emphasized for you to put in your design? So uh, for each key concept, uh, then you develop your activities and resources, as I mentioned before, um, and that will make it easier for you then to have a introduction page for each of those modules. You can use that as a book chapter, or you can also use that as a week module. I'll show you when we go hands-on to show you the courses. It might make it more sense to you. Those are the learning objectives for that particular book or uh, chapter or for that particular module or for that particular week that you were teaching certain uh, concepts. And that way, that is what you're going to put in your introduction page, which is really important to guide the student throughout the, the throughout your uh, Canvas course. And then all of that is nothing more than you trying to align your module to the objectives that you're trying to learn, not trying to learn, I'm sorry, trying to teach your SL, SLOs, your student learning objectives. So uh, nothing more than if you could, if you could, each module should align itself to what you were trying the students, what is most important for the students to learn. Um, and, uh, and all of that through the activities, the resources, materials, and assessments. And I'm going to give you an example here, which you don't need to particularly do this way. Uh, I don't. I go right into Canvas and I start just doing my 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 uh, introduction pages and it makes a whole lot more sense doing there than having to write a paper and then put this paper in canvas but this gives you an idea what is the module title for you i generally put week one um week one written assignments or week one uh, learning how to abc so that's going to be my title. And then I describe what are, we're going to learn. Then I would say, what is it that they're going to um, the learning objectives, which is always you have to use a verb that is very active, like identify and discuss the role of learning your ABCs. Uh, and the, the module objectives in general are the ones that you find in, in a book chapter, right? At the beginning of the chapter, you're always going to have the learning objectives there. And that helps you um, in, introduce that to, in, to have that in an introduction page for each of the modules. Uh, talking about the assignments, we all know that we have our summative uh, assignments in your formative ones. The summative ones, you know, those exams, which it's a, each chunk of the course, you give an assignment so the student will show you that indeed they're learning. More important than that in Canvas, especially if you are not teaching synchronous, is um, formative ones, which is from a concept to another concept. It could be quizzes at the end of each chapter. It could be assignments at the, at the end of each week. It could be a, a group project uh, at each couple of weeks. You can have put five or six students together and have a project for them, prepare a power presentation for the class or something like that. 
Um, also, lesson to lesson, my, my quizzes, I mentioned this to you, and discussions, which is a very good way uh, to have interaction between the students and also uh, a strong presence from the instructor in those um, uh, in the classes. Um, resources, what's important about resources? To have that right where it is needed, not somewhere in which you just tell the student, well, if you need to know how to make this assignment, go to the orientation page, uh, the second group over there, you can find something you should learn or you should try to learn how to use links within a page uh, and within an assignment where the students just click on it and he opens up right there. The less a student has to click on, on, on something to go find some, something, it's better. Uh, it is much more um, less frustrating for the student. You know yourself, when you have to click on several things to get to where you want, you just ended up frustrated and just give up. And that's the whole idea with the students is try to make the resources right there for them as much as you can integrate it into Canvas instead of going also outside Canvas in a different um, website. And I will also um, show you how to do that. And make the rubrics your best friend. Uh, I know, especially people who, who do have, a, instructors who have a lot of assignments, written assignments, how much you need to, to grade and correct and all of that. If you have a rubric, the, the number one thing for a rubric, yes, it will make your life easier, but also it's going to be very consistent from one student to another. And the third very good reason is that the student will know exactly how they're going to be assessed. They're not going to be guessing, well, should I do this? Well, should I do that? If they go to the rubric, they will look into the rubric, go through the list. Oh, OK, this is what I need to do, this A, B, C, D. And once you create a rubric, uh, that can be for your next few um, uh, courses, the classes that you teach. Uh, you only change a rubric when you change an assignment. Uh, and you should do that once in a while because um, it is good to keep your materials fresh, right? Even for yourself, you don't want to be teaching something over and over again to the point that you don't care about that anymore. Um, again, rubrics are very good for you to have very clear expectations. So students are never guessing. And students, just like employees, and I was in the business world for a long time, they should never be surprised by anything that happens to them. If I get an F, I shouldn't be surprised. If I get an A, uh, maybe I'm surprised, but I'm happy, right? But um, should never, ever be surprised. Try to take the element of surprise from the classroom because it is in, a, in an environment where students feel safe that they learn better because there is no surprises. I feel safe. I can make my mistakes. I know how and why I made that mistake because the instructor showed me the right way. Uh, so here is an example uh, of um, resources right where it's needed. For example, this is the bottom of an assignment. So I, I have the assignment on top, so you can figure it out. There's an assignment on the top. In the bottom, I have my resources. Here is just a very silly example. Um, because this was a course for um, instructors, how to use the course settings and the student guide on how to submit an online assignment. But what you have to keep in mind, especially for um, students who never took a class at West LA or students who never used Canvas before, uh, it's, everything is very new for them. And it's very important to have those information, how to submit an, an online assignment. And you don't have to have this on every single assignment. If you do, wonderful. But if you have at least on the first week, first two weeks of the course, it's going to make your life easier too, because you will not have a lot of students confused, asking questions all the time. So give them what they need, give them the tools for them to do the work that is necessary. And on the bottom, of course, you have the grading rubric um, for a hands-on assignment. What, what is it? Um, if anybody here needs um, sources, resources about how to create rubric, what kind of rubric you have, blah, 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 um, I'll be very happy to share anything I have with you guys. Um, I will make sure to have my email for you available at any time. Even my phone number, you can call me too. 
Um, interaction. Most important thing in Canvas. I understand we're not going to interact with students in Canvas, right? Uh, we don't have a camera in Canvas unless you are doing a um, synchronous uh, class in which you, you are Zooming with them. I call Zooming with them. And they are, you have their interactions and you're talking and they're listening, hopefully not watching TV on the side. But anyway, um, how I am going to make my canvas? Like they open up the canvas and they go, wow, this is exciting. I think I'm, I'm really curious about going page by page and seeing what's, what's in the next page. That's what we want to do. So uh, the interaction here, very three important uh, prongs is faculty to student, is student to faculty, and is student to student. Faculty to a student, you, um, you, it's in general, you are going to send them an email. You may send them the grades and you make comments on their assignments. You're going to give them feedback, which by the way, feedback needs to be as soon as possible. Don't let a week go by without a um, feedback because if the course is created on a level by level in which students are building up their skills, you wanted to make sure on right after, after the first assignment, you give them instructions on what they did right and what they did wrong for them to have that tool to apply those into the next assignment. That's very important for students. Then they have, oh, I know why I got a minus five here because I forgot my, um, my my references, for example. And um, now I know that in the next time, if I put the references in, I'm going to add five more points to my grade. Um, a student to faculty, what is very important about student to faculty is a place in which it's safe for students to bring their questions or students to inquire about their grades. In general, what we use there is Canvas inbox, right? Uh, I think it's the more appropriate I tell students not to email me on my uh, West LA College email because those emails may be lost, but if they do on Canvas inbox, I'm always there to answer them right away. Um, and a student to a student, a place in which students can just you know, talk to each other. In general, you could use the chat in Canvas, but by my experience, I don't see students doing that much uh, because chat is supposed to be instantaneous, right? right? Like a um, like a text messaging and students don't visit that in my experience. Uh, so what you can create, and I, I'm stealing this from um, uh, Diana Gosset. She had a discussion called a Students Lounge. And I really like the way she, she named that because it became like a place in which students can interact with each other with no structure saying hello, or, you know, oh, I have a question about this that is not really related to the course. For questions related to the course materials, of course, you should have what I call students forum. Students post their questions and you answer or other students answer if it is a weekend or where you are not available. Another thing that I found interesting in Canvas uh, course design is giving like a point or two points for students who answer questions from other students. Um, I found that that creates um, a more level of interaction, a higher level of interaction. Uh, and of course, you're going to have your weekly uh, interaction, which I use to be participation, participation based on discussions related to the course or topics or materials and make them alive. I'm going to show you some examples of dead pages or dead discussions and very alive and enthusiastic discussions. You can use pictures, related pictures, videos, um, um, uh, or some games. Uh, I can show you. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show you the, the game that I have uh, because it's in a different computer. But I did create um, um, a game with students. It's, it's, it's simply a PowerPoint presentation in which the student click on something in, in and they, they, it's, they click on the, on the question and then they click on the answer to make some points. And at the end, you know, they ended up having whatever many points, they count how many points they have. And it becomes quite uh, fun for students to learn. Um, I will try, if you are interested in, in checking those, I will be able, I'll send you the PowerPoint. 
and you can adapt that for your own class. The one that I created was for business English uh, and students really liked. And I used the, those games as a review of the materials uh, right before the midterms or before the finals. Uh, so students can review all the materials in a fun kind of way. All right, so here is an example uh, how you are going to interact with your students. Um, first and foremost is enthusiasm is really important online, right? If I say, I'm excited to be here, just put some exclamation points there, right? It makes a whole big, big difference. Um, share your name, how, many, how long you have been teaching. I love teaching because my favorite things. Here you all know what you have to do. Very, very important, and I put this on the bottom, is my wishes for the school year are, right? Important for you to put this. My students are going to be all successful or my students are going to leave this class knowing more than before they join this class, whatever that is. And motivate, encourage your students also to include that in their, uh, when they share about then, the meet and greet kind of discussion that you have at the beginning. Uh, because then you can always revert back to tell them, hey, what did you have in mind when you started this class? Do you think like by week three or week four or week five, you can ask your students, do you think you are meeting the wishes that you had for this school year so far? So it keeps them accounted, account, it gets some sort of accountability for what they promised themselves, how their school year was going. Or in this case, you can just use for the class, for the course. So how do you, what kind of strategy are you going to, see, going to use in order to be successful uh, in this class? In week four or week five, you can just send an email to each student, ask, hey, can you go back to your meet and greet uh, post and tell me how far or how close you are uh, to the goals that you have set for yourself in this classroom, in this class, this course. And um, again, we're going to have a great year learning or a class learning together. Very, very important to be enthusiastic with the words that you use on your, on your uh, class. Now, I mentioned in the beginning, you don't have to have a start a, class, a course from scratch. Uh, what you could use is open source. Open source is there for you in Canvas. Let me just remove this tab from front of me so I can see what I'm reading. Yeah, Canvas Commons. I will show you exactly where you're going to find Canvas Commons. And together, I can show you how to start a course from Canvas Commons because I was just giving a class just last night and I have to prepare for Monday. Um, so, oops, I know what happened. So um, we are going to log into Canvas. There is going to be an update or import. We're going to create an import page. Uh, we're going to review all of the assignments. We're going to add a module. Um, and deadline is going to look for it, add a closed module page with enthusiasm. So let's, let's see. Um, I think I wanted to continue this with you guys, if you're okay, and then I will go back and show you the class, particular how to do, how to look into the comments for the class that you can just design your Canvas course. I think it makes more sense. Um, so in active learning, in your introduction to your students, make videos of yourself. I do say, I have a video, hi, my name is such and such, I am going to be an instructor. Uh, those are the things you have to do. I can just embed that video into my introduction page, or I can embed that video when I do my discussion. So if students are willing, maybe you can ask them, you can either do a video of yourself, but if you're not interested in doing a video of yourself, showing your face on camera, that's fine. Uh, and it's not required anyway. Um, you should uh, then reply and, and, and tell us a little bit about yourself and your goals for this class. Uh, in, in the pages of your Canvas course, you can also add relevant pictures. There is a way you can, you can embed pictures um, uh, 
from Unsplash, very relevant. You need to make relevant for your course. And, um, uh, and for yourself, you may want to keep a picture of yourself when you do your introductions and you can even make cartoons of yourself. Um, right here, I will add this to the, to the, to, I will add that to a page if, ever, if anyone needs, I will, I will make sure to get your emails when I account for you, um, your attendance. I'll have a page for you with all these resources. So you don't have to take notes right now. I'll make sure to have that page emailed to you. So you can go to those um, um, websites and create a cartoon of yourself. So it's much more fun for, for the students to see that. Uh, and I will, we, we can use Bitmo Bitmoji is actually the most popular one. And it appears to be a little easier uh, if you don't have experience with that, but it's fun. Um, so, so I'm going to just give you examples of a fun page versus a non-fun page, right? Here I have some inadequate tips. Maybe this is a page in Canvas and I have a list of the things, what to do, what not to do. That's it. Now here I have the same, but in a much more fun way in my page, right? I took this from uh, albion.com is an etiquette, uh, is free to use. Um, and uh, this becomes more fun because now students can see little, little people in there, uh, different kind of, of um, fonts. It's just more fun and more exciting to see on a screen than to read this, right? So it makes a huge difference. Uh, also, I think I learned this with Leslie, canva.com. You can have a free account there and it's just unbelievable how many um, uh, little things like this you can create. I don't even know what this is. Leslie is gonna be able to help me with this. Um, and uh, you can create so many things, so many pages, so many adorable little things. You, you don't even need to know. And I liked Canva so much that I ended up uh, purchasing um, a monthly account with them because I then use this for my consulting business. So, so you know. So you see what difference does it make. Uh, another example. This is an example of a welcome to business English. This was one of my very first classes uh, back in 2017, I was not required to do Canvas because it was a live class, but I always had all the resources and materials and assignments because it was easy for me to grade on Canvas, uh, all in Canvas. This was my very first page, the very first course I created, and it was created pay, you know, word by word by word. Now, here is my new um, class, business communication that I am teach. I just finished teaching um, the session, first session in, in the summer. So I have a little picture there that is more exciting. I have different things. At the end, I do have my picture with my, with, with my name on it, etc. Uh, it just becomes a little more fun for students to interact with it. And I do have, um, if you see on the left-hand side, I do have direct links to very important um, sites that they may want to go into the Wesley College, resources that are important for students to have. Um, so again, discussions, add videos to your discussions. Uh, have a video and then say, hey, after you watch the video, what do you think about this? Uh, also make discussions 101. I have a mock interview and students go in twos, two students, A and B, and they make an interview with each other as if they were pretending to be interviewing for a job. So that becomes more exciting and more entertaining for students to be able to do that. Games, I mentioned that to you. Jamboard on Google, you can add that to your Google and Jamboard, even though it's much more exciting when you do that on a synchronous, you can also use a Jamboard leave it there and students can go and add their thoughts about something anytime they wanted to. That would be probably um, something if they never experienced before, they're gonna start saying, wow, that instructor have the most exciting class. And that's what you wanna hear. You wanna hear a student who is excited about your class. In the announcements, you can put videos. In the announcements, you can put beautiful pictures. 
uh, also encourage students to share pictures, to share cartoons or make, uh, make a cartoon of themselves if they don't like to show their faces. If the situation at home is not you know, conducive for them to be on video, which you know, is highly recommended for them not to be required to be on video, um, they can have fun with that as well. So finally, what I wanted to bring up to you, which is very, very important, I think we're doing fine with um, uh, time, is about the California community, our poker game. If anybody plays poker, this could be fun, but it has nothing to do with the game of poker. It has to do with peer online course review. I am a reviewer. I took the class last summer, I think, it was a 40 hour course or class. And I am, um, I have the privilege of reviewing uh, courses, online courses and giving feedback uh, to instructors on ways to improve. And I'm gonna go over that as well with you. Uh, and of course, I'm, I'm, I don't do that by myself. There is a poker, um, group in West LA College. Um, I am just on the very bottom where I am. I do my review and then I send it to somebody to compare notes and make sure on the right track for that, that, um, that course. And the four core important areas is the content in presentation, of course, of how the, the content of the course is, interaction with the students, the quality of ass assessment and the quantity of assessment and how related, related is to the course and accessibility, which in itself is a course by itself. I'm not gonna, I may touch on that if I have time, but accessibility is a big one uh, for students with disabilities. We always have to keep that in mind because we can see really well on the computer or we can hear well, uh, we need to be very, um, aware of those less fortunate that um, have uh, disabilities that very difficult for them to interact with Canvas the way um, other students would. So ah, I, I, I just broke down the, the surprise. Sur surprise was gonna be, just pretend you are surprised. Well, Miriam, I hope there could be a rubric or a map for a course design. The good news is there is, and it made my life much easier. The very, when I took the, the, the poker review course, I learned so much. And then I was so excited that I went back to my courses and I changed a bunch of stuff just to make it um, um, uh, aligned with what uh, California Community Colleges requires, right? Uh, for courses online. And uh, I was so excited because this course design rubric made everything much easier and it's, it's, it's amazing. And by the way, if you decide to have your course um, reviewed by a poker for our poker group, uh, what you can do is I will also put on a page all the, 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 the resources where you, you should go, not go. And first you review your course based on this rubric and then they review your course. So you're not blindsided by everything wrong that is with your course. And uh, I will also go online to show you uh, that. And I'll just go very easy on the content presentation or things that you will, you will be able to do if you follow the rubric, which is pretty much everything we talked about. It's, it, uh, accessibility formatting, accessibility checkers that we have in Canvas, which I will show you very, very uh, easy to go about. Um, and that's it. Uh, if you have any questions now is a good time, or what I wanna do is I wanna jump into some real life course design. Or if there's anything in the chat that I should know about, let me go to the chat. I think I can go to the chat from here. Poker, peer online course review, oh. yes. Mm -hmm. I no see, questions in the I don't chat. See but it... All right. Mm -hmm. Well, what I take is you're much smarter than I am mm -hmm. <laughs> when there are no questions. 
Um, all right, so here I'm going to stop the sharing on this and I'm going to jump into, give me a, just a second to get out of here. First, I'm going to, let me make a note here. I'm going to show you the sort, the Canvas comments. And then I will show you some of my courses. And then I'm going to show you the poker. Three things I'll go over. So let's start with the Canvas common and I will show you live how to go about. Let me share my screen. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. All right, hopefully everybody can see this, but bear with me for one second because I need to make sure one thing happens. So can everybody see my welcome to Buzz 032? All right, so then I'm in the right place. So here I wanna show you comments. All right, I am going to put a course that I'm going to teach in the fall. And here I find a few ones, but I know that this is the one I want, business law. And guess who created? My very, very favorite person, Cyrus, right? I am such a nerd when it comes to these kind of things, but he's, to me, he's a genius. Like West LA College have so many geniuses. I'm so happy to be there. So I click on it. And here is my business law OER, open educational resource. I thank God I didn't look, I didn't forget this one. Um, and here is a course. It's kind of a skeleton, more than a skeleton of a course, because it has resources for the students. It's going to have um, even a Canvas orientation. If they're new to Canvas, they can go over here and learn a bunch of stuff. Uh, and then here are all the chapters. So here in this course in particular, students do not need to buy a book because all the materials are already embedded in Canvas for them. So I go over here and I go, okay, this is indeed the course that I want. The first thing I need to do is to click on update. I go to show our course. And it's not that I wanted to update my course, right? I can't because I don't have access to the comments to update any course. That's the job of the genius, Cyrus. So I see that February 2020 is the last time that he did some changes. I remember there were some files that were not supposed to be there and he removed that for me. I, every time I have a problem, I just call Cyrus. That's my life. So what I do is I click on, on this and on the right hand side over here, I say import or download. And I apologize because this, your face is, is, keeps on, on being on the top of things that I need to do. Uh, okay, so here is my course. This is the course that I am teaching this fall and I am going to import this course that I found in common into my course. Hey, you have successfully started the import. Now life is wonderful, right? So the, the, the import is going. And I should have shown you what the course was before, which was a blank canvas. It had nothing on it. Oops. So I'm going to go to the course that I just uploaded. Let's see if it's there. It might take a few minutes. Yeah, I think it's gonna take a few minutes because with Zoom and all that, it might slow down a little. So, not a problem. Not a problem. Let's update, view update notes, the model broke down, updates. And here is the place in which, of course, you have to, share, to, to, to check with your division chair, what kind of material is allowed or not allowed. I am, I don't have any expertise to tell you what's allowed or not allowed, but in my division, we have a very high 
strong propensity to try to get everything OER because that is less cost for the students. Um, so you have to have which ones, which materials from the commons you were able to import as your Canvas course. And if you, if you at least could get a skeleton and then adapt for the materials that you have even better, even if the students need to use their, their, their books because the books in, in certain uh, disciplines are very uh, necessary, uh, you can always adapt. So let's go back to the course again and see if it's there. If it's not, I'm just gonna show you, I'm going to show you um, what I have. All right, see, nothing was there and now everything is in there. So I just published that, I have the instructors. Look, do not publish this module. So don't click here to publish this module ever because this is just for your view. This just gives you some ideas of what's going on. It has the Canvas uh, orientation. Uh, this is all published, but my course is not published yet when, as you can see on the right hand side over here. So here is a skeleton, right? Basically all I have is readings, which is the chapters of the book, a quiz and an assignment. So your job now is to make sure you go to the, to the, to the, to the quiz and the quiz is appropriate. If it's not, you're gonna change or add or remove some, some questions. Also the assignment, I'm gonna just take a look at this quickly. I go through the assignment and it looks like a bland, bland assignment, right? Not very exciting. This is where your job comes into making this more interactive with your students. This is the part in which you have to create those beautiful pages that I talk about, which I'm going to jump into that because we are running out of time. So let me go to my summer class, which I just finished teaching. Here are my modules. Uh, I have orientation in which I have um, whether the, the student, if your computer is ready, the students will go in each of the pages. I make it very exciting with pictures. Um, sorry. Uh, and they can keep going. And uh, this is much more exciting, right? Having a picture of what they need to do. Don't click here, click here then having instructions in writing for them. Uh, let me go back to a module again. Very important that I mentioned to you before in each of the beginning of the modules, let's say week one. Week one, you should have an overview and tasks where your SLOs will go. This is the beginning of the journey. Welcome to week number one. After you read certain chapter, this is what you're gonna learn. After reading the module number three or chapter number three, this is what you're gonna learn. And most importantly, I have successful students to complete what are the things that they need to do in this week for them to be successful. I give them a suggested flow and everything that is here, right? Where do they go for a week relate the questions about the course? Or if I wanted to communicate with, with my professor, I go here in Canvas. And it's very easy to do those links uh, when you click on edit. Okay, I'm gonna speed up. When you click on edit, you are going to have this little beautiful link over here. So when I click on a, pay, on a, on a, on a word, for example, and I wanna make this word a live link, I have the option to use external link or a course link. On the course link, it opens up over here to me that I can link that word in particular to any of the pages that I have on my, on my course that I have created before, right? All my rules, regulations, resources, what I wanted them to do. Uh, also, I can link to assignments. I can go, I can link to quizzes. I can link everything to everything. So students don't need to be, okay, let me go back to quizzes. Oh no, now it's an assignment. So, uh, so it's already on the page. They click on it and they are right there. Uh, and one good example of that is on my welcome business communication page in which here I have all these links. These links take them to the syllabus. It takes them to the meet and greet or to the orientation mode or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I make very interactive with the students, very um, uh, even though we're not interacting, they are interacting with the course itself. And that's what's very important. Um, let me then go very quickly to the poker. Uh, I can go back to this and stay 
a few minutes afterwards, that's not a problem. I just wanted to make sure before we leave in two minutes that everybody has this information about the, the poker. Hold on. Ah, everybody can see? The yes. Marian, quickly. Yeah. Um, we actually have until 350, 350. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that's, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. I was rushing because I thought it was 20, but it's an hour and 20 minutes, not 320. Beautiful. All right. So never mind. Let me go back to our course because there is a whole lot more here for you to see. So here you see the idea, right? If I went too fast with the links, let me know on the chat and I'll make sure to go over this one more time. I'll just give you a few seconds if you have questions about the links. No There's question. something that I learned recently about the links. I used to say like, click here to view the syllabus. Yeah. And then I learned that you shouldn't be doing that. That's <laughs> right. Go to syllabus and the syllabus in itself is the link. Yeah, I learned that too. I learned that too. And I learned that by seeing other courses and by, you know, by trial and error. And, and even when you take courses, uh, taking Canvas courses from somebody else, you go, oh, this is so exciting, right? This is much more. Um, let me show you one more thing on this. Hold on, modules. So this is my welcome page. You can see it's very interactive. And I think what's important for us, and I, I apologize that my, 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 I go module, what I do in my module, I do week one and I put the date on it. You don't have to, if you don't want to have to change this each time that you have a course, you can just do module one, learning about written communication. But I already have that on my overview, so I don't want to do an overview, but I could. I mean, the more information, it, it wouldn't hurt for me to, in, to include what, the what it, they're learning on the week here. But the issue here with my week one, this is a five-week course, which means I have three chapters for them to read. And it would be very difficult to write all the chapters over here. Anyway, so here I have the overview in test, then I have all the readings. PowerPoint, the discussion. Um, I don't know if this one has any interaction. Principles, let me see if it does. No. If somebody can turn on their microphone, I think I am listening to radio or TV. Um, Okay, so more reading, more quizzes, more, and then all the assignments are in the bottom, right? Um, Excuse me, Marini. Yes. Uh, Marini has her hand up. Marini, what is your question? Hi, quick question. I notice as you're scrolling down on the right side, there's a little green circles, which if I recall indicates that you said that as a, a requirement that the student has to view the page or submit something. Is that right? Um, in this particular view, the green little button means it has yeah. been published. Oh, okay. It okay. has been published. Gonna... Now, I know what you're talking about. If you're talking um, about whether students need to review or not something, this is where you go over here on yes, you edit. Exactly. Yes, you edit your... Um, uh, and then here you can enter your 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 requisite pre either they have to do something before uh, here I remove them because I was doing some stuff but I do have a requirement that they have to review each one even if okay. you just go into it exactly. and move on yes in a certain order you are right yeah that's the way it works in the student so I'm glad here that you do that because I was going to ask your opinion because I tend to do that as a I think you're breaking off a little bit. So let me try to see. Uh, there, oh, there are pros. Ah, yeah, better. Okay, sorry, I'm driving. <laughs> no problem. Um, 
so I notice that students will reach out to me saying that an assignment is lost or they can't move forward and I have to keep explaining. And I've created a video explaining or in my orientation, I say these requirements are there because it's important information and you have to view it before you move forward. Yes. But I always have to kind of re-explain because students will say, oh, I couldn't access the next thing because it was locked. And I said, well, you have to make sure that you viewed everything that's a prerequisite. So I was just wondering if there's something that you do, if you run into that same challenge with your students, is yes. there a way to try to mitigate All it the time. Okay. All the time. All the time. Everybody will run into that. And uh, my requirement from one week to another is for them to complete at least the quizzes. But I also require them that they have to go, even if they don't read anything, because we cannot make sure that they read, that at least they have to click on every single one of them. Right, right. At least that, yes. Okay. So okay. the problem is always going to be there. You're always going to have students who wanted to have shortcuts. Oh, you know, I don't need to read. I'm smart enough. And well, right. you know, being smart does not make up for the fact that you have to do work. You know, you have to do the work. Yes. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Um, so let me see. I, I'm trying to find a assignment communicating in business. Here, week two. So you see, I have a week two. Now, and more interaction with students. Um, I do have uh, the course related questions here where we mention, right, that students will enter. I may, I, I don't like, I, I kept this as it is because I was finishing the course, but I wanted to have now for my next course, just one place in which they ask questions. It doesn't need to be just week one, week two, week three, because you may forget that you ask on week one and now you're in week two, but it, it's confusing. So I am changing that. So Canvas is an organic sort of system in which it's never stale. You always gonna have to be changing. You always gonna have to be improving. That's the whole idea of learning. We, we try as good instructors at a college to infuse this desire in students to always have this, this, this thing, like I'm always gonna learn. The more I learn, the more I figure out that I know nothing and I have a whole lot more to learn. So it's the same with us, right? We cannot be hypocrites trying to teach somebody to do something when we don't do it ourselves. And Canvas is about learning, it's about improving. Um, every time I take a course, every time I see somebody else's class, I go, wow, this is, I'm gonna steal from you. And I steal a lot of information from people. And, um, and you can steal a lot of stuff for me too. So here, another interaction is at the end of the, the week, students click on the, on the, on the week one wrap up. So I, here I, is where I give them words of encouragement. Uh, I have a nice picture there. I'll show you how to put that picture there right now because it's just fun. Uh, you just, when you go edit, you go into, let's say this picture, for example, I will go, I already found a, a misspellings on my, on my thing, which I'm gonna have to fix. So I go to external, oops, never mind, pictures. I go to pictures, this little picture here, I upload a message and I can go to unsplash. And if I search computer, it's gonna show me several pictures. Right. Just make sure you, if it is belongs to Nord Nordwood themes, you know, pictured by Nordwood themes at the bottom of your page, um, and what else? Out uh, alternative text for people with disability. Very important for you to make sure when you click on image options, a student at a laptop. So just you just inf show you you write down what the picture is because people. Uh, with uh, visual disabilities will not be able to see the pictures, but there are um, resources for them when they go over the image, they can hear a student and laptop, they know what the picture means. So we want to try to make uh, as good of interaction as possible with people with disability. Uh, another thing I was going to show you over here, the little accessibility checker. And again, I am no expert on that whatsoever. Uh, you will have to take a course in accessibility. Uh, it's actually a fantastic course and it has several areas to go over. When you click on accessibility, it's going to give you some ideas about 
Um, the text is smaller than 18 points and that's not good. You have to change that. Um, text, blah, blah, blah. Text, mine is all text that is small, I guess, uh, which I will change when I complete this. But this is a very, this is not a perfect accessibility checker by any means, but it does give you a good idea of things that you need to change. I think it's just going over my picture because I was just on my picture before. Um, let's see how I can close this. Okay. Uh, so the accessibility is help. So every time you finish a page or you finish um, uh, editing something, uh, make sure you, oops. So I go link options and this is the test. Let's fix the misspelling. There we go. Uh, I'll save it for now. So, but the whole idea here is that at week one, you have a wrap up, you're motivating your students to continue on, click next. On my first um, uh, week, I always have a big, big, big bold letters here. Click next to go to the next place, right? Because maybe people, students are not used to Canvas yet. But right now I am on week three or four. They already know that they need to click on next. So then I don't need to have this message here again. Um, uh, oops, sorry. The faces are still on me here. Hold on. Um, what else? What else? What else? Home. Um, in talking about pages, I have hundreds and hundreds of pages. You wouldn't believe. Um, and pages is very, very fun to use. And what I'm trying to do after the last course I take, any kind of PDF that I have, I'm going to try to change and, and create a page and make a page instead of having the PDF because it's easier. It's easier to manu manipulate. Uh, it's easy also for students to read. Um, so, and talking about pages, let me just open view all pages. So here on the bottom, I have whoop, whoop, whoop. here, week one overview, week one wrap up, week two overview, week up, da, da, da. So I have all those pages and all I have to do on a Sunday or on a Saturday, whichever day I choose, I will go on the right hand side over here and say, uh, oops, no, use as front page. So the moment I use as front page, every time the student goes home, they click on home or if they log into Canvas right away, that's what they see. They see that front page right away. In the first week, I have the welcome page all the time, right? But on week one, I'm gonna have the, the overview, the week four, I'm gonna have overview for that week four. And uh, it's very interactive as well. Each week it changes, which week I change. Oh, okay, so now it's another week for me. And it's very helpful for even students who are behind. Oh my God, we're week two, I need to finish my week one. Uh, so that probably helps a little bit with the issue that, uh, oh, I wanted to jump into doing the work for week two. No, no, no. You need to finish week one. Um, let me see the time. Okay, we're good. Um, so one thing that I wanted to see here, what does my student, my professor want, right? Very important. Oh, I'm so fit. So this was a page that I also stole from somebody else. <laughs> Um, so, and try to make your, your pages, your assignments, the, the title is exciting as well, right? Are you ready for online learning? Is your computer ready? What's your time commitment, right? Here, I could be a little more fun, but I put a little time here. Oh my God, time is eight o'clock, a big myth about online, some things to note. Here is what I mentioned about the first week. Click next below to continue to the next topic. So in the beginning, the first week of the class, I have this in almost every single page and almost every single assignment. Now week three, three, four, five, then I don't need that anymore because now they know that they need to click on next. I have some fun thing on the, on the one that is that, well, now I think you know what to do. So I'm not gonna tell you to click next. So, um, and again, that's the way you make it more fun, more interactive, more engaging. Students really need the engagement, especially during these very difficult trying times. Um, wait a minute. I know what I'm going to this week two. Week two. Um, 
speak to another another thing um you can ask a student to create a logo with their um with their um, initials right so it would be something extra for them to do but maybe fun i have that in one of my when uh, my assignments visual media well i don't think i'm gonna find it right now what i wanted to, to show you oh this is what i wanted to show you about classroom survey on week two for example i have um talking about interaction with students and how i have both i have one survey in which students check themselves out they check themselves and they tell themselves okay how are you doing against your goal how are you doing so and then all i do is is this is nothing more than a quiz right is ungraded survey so i add this one uh so i ask them to help this is my emoji or my my cartoon which i created and it looks much better than me in person <laughs> um so here they just take you can't you I don't I don't think you should grade because this has nothing to do with learning so you're not supposed to learn to grade things that they don't learn. Uh, but this is a very fun three i'll show you how many how many how many questions I have here I have one. Two. I have maybe five or six questions very, very quick. So whether whether they felt welcome, whether they they how can I make the the the, the course more welcome? If I write other, they'll tell me why. Um, that's it. Five, I think it's five or six questions. It's very quick. So it just gives you an idea. It gives you temperature. And when you go into and the way to look into that is I. Ah, sorry, some stuff, submit quiz. Yeah, it's okay. So when you go to the survey statistics, uh, you can see the, the question breakdown. How many people said that the course has clear explanation too? And the one who didn't, who is it? So it's, it's gonna show you the student names, which I'm not supposed to do that in front of you. I apologize, just pretend you didn't see it. So then you can follow up with the students if you feel like it. If you feel no, you should feel like it, right? Okay, I understand that you, 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 the expectations or the explanations were not very clear to you. Is there anything that I can help you with? So those are very important. I have this uh, on week two and four. And then at the end of the class, I have a, a, a big class survey for then also to fill it up for me to know what things I need to improve for my next class. Uh, and finally, I'll show you the, 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 and then we'll go to poker. Where is introduction? Sorry, my, my module is so long because again, five weeks and I have a lot that I need to use in one module. I could do module by module or chapter by chapter, but I find that confused. Self, self assessment. So assessments in poker, uh, peer online course review, very important uh, in both of the instructor as well as the students themselves. This is a way for students to check how, the, how well they're doing. Uh, and I have them do this on week one and week three, I think. So question number one, I finish all of my work on time or most of the readings or blah, 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 right? And again, uh, after they answered, how many questions I have here? I have, oh, the, here I have more because it's about the students, 10, 11. So they, they, they do. It says one point, but it's, it's valid. It's nothing. I, I don't grade this. These are ungraded. So now what I'll do is pretend I am submitting. In the same way, you can go to uh, statistics, uh, survey statistics here and see who said what uh, and who is having problems. Like I completed the quizzes all, all of them completed on time, right? That's wonderful. I don't need to worry about that. But if you find that here, I posted an answer to and two replies for the discussion. One student did not. 
So you may want to follow up with them and explain to them the importance of participating in class, how important that is. All right, let me see what time it is, 38. Okay, we'll have 10 minutes. So let me stop here for a minute and see if you have any questions. In the chat, I can't see the chat from here. No questions in the chat. No questions, no questions. Uh, I told you about the rubrics, how important that is. Uh, they are not visible here for the students, but if you go to an assignment, let me show you an assignment so you can see the rubric. Uh, let's take this one. Here. So I created the rubric, um, uh, what is the organization, the content, development, critical thinking, and grammar. Uh, some other disciplines may give more points to grammar than not. You know, here to me, more important is content and critical thinking, um, how organized they are. So, and those are very easy. You probably know about that. Um, when I click on this, I have all the rubrics of all times of all the courses that I taught. And I can, you know, figure out which one you want. So if I want to use this rubric, I can use this rubric, but I can still make some changes over here by editing the rubric. So that's very, very useful. Uh, it, it sounds a little complicated at the beginning. Maybe at the beginning, if you don't have experience with rubrics in the canvas, you can just create a very basic one and then start slowly course by course or week by week or module by module, uh, adapting a little bit better uh, for what the course says. Uh, for example, if I'm teaching a course, I'm teaching a course right now with um, that they have to do their resumes. So there are certain areas in the resumes that you have to have. So I may have criterias on those things uh, that are important for the students to know. And one thing though about rubrics, once you have graded one student using the rubric, you cannot change that rubric anymore because it's good for consistency, right? You don't want it to grade one student with one rubric and another student with a different one. That's not gonna be good. So again, the name of the game is consistency. And here you can see uh, uh, research. I have the, 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 the link for them right there where they need, like if they don't know how to use Canvas Studios or if they want a free screen recorder to, to make a video, uh, they, can, they, they can go here and watch a video that shows them this particular, I did not make it. Uh, embedded i don't know the reason but that, that was a reason it's always a reason for everything uh, so yeah click here click here is not a good idea right it's always make this assignment make the assignment itself the link it will be much more efficient more direct especially with students with disability and what I am not going to show you, I will show you, but I'm not going to teach you because I just learned and I don't think I should be bugging you so much with, um, no, I want to go to my sandbox. Sandbox, sandbox, sandbox. This is what I learned with advanced canvas that, my goodness, this is going to change my life. Oh, uh, tabs. Look at how pretty. This is one page with three tabs. I'm so impressed with myself. And this is using HTML. Not complicated at all. It's very, very easy. I can send you the instructions if anybody's interested. Uh, I will, um, you can just write that on the chat and I'll be more than happy to give you instructions how to do that. This is gonna change my life. This is just this two, some, don't pay attention to the content because this was just my sandbox to learn about this. But in one page of my welcome, instead of having all those different pages for students to click, 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 they can just go over here, click and click. And on the bottom, what do I write? Make sure to read all three tabs, top of this page. Right on the bottom here, this is what I write to them. So they know, oh, okay, I'm going to read the second page. So I can have um, welcome, learning objectives, to-do list. This is exactly what my pages are going to look like for each beginning of the week. 
That's the way I want to do. And for assignments, well, unless you have a page for assignment, in the assignment itself, you cannot have tabs, unfortunately. If you could, it would be easier because then I can have assignment, resources, and extra whatever, right? Or rubric or whatever, but it's not working like that yet. So if anybody has interest of learning the, this, I think this is going to be beautiful. It's going to be much better, much more efficient now. Um, um, I just put in the chat. Mm -hmm. I put in the chat HTML hacks. And okay, the tabs perfect. is maybe like on the fourth or fifth page. Perfect, perfect, so. perfect. Excellent. Now um, let's go to poker because we are almost. I don't want to take too much of your time. Course design rubric. All right. How, what do I have to do for my course to be aligned and to be beautiful? And you're going to learn a lot. So those are the same sessions that I showed you on the PowerPoint before. Um, and what the nitty gritty of all is here. And it gives you click, click, click. If you want to do this for your course, you can. You can self-assess in... in, in if you ask for a poker review, for a review of your online course or course, this is what you're going to receive. You're going to receive this form in which you're going to self-assess yourself first. You, 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 you will look, okay, does my unit objectives are included in the individual uh, learning units? If it's not, it's incomplete. If it is aligned, all unit objectives are included in the individual learning unit. So I have a module, module one or week one, and I have that first page of introduction, right? I call introduction page. This is nothing more than the unit objectives. So those are included there. And if I do the un unit objectives consistently placed in an easy place to be located, I get exemplary elements, right? Everybody should be very happy to be aligned, but always we have always to strive to be exemplary, right? That's my idea. So here you have all the information on what you have to do. And if I am going to include uh, on the page with information for you, detail information. Oops, never mind. Sorry about that. I know I was, I get so ahead of myself. Uh, I'm going to have detailed information of what this means, like content presentation, course navigation. What does this mean? Because here you might not say navigation and content flow are not easily determined. Uh, what is this? This is nothing then how easy it is for a student to get from one A from point A to point B. Or if a student is in an assignment, how easy it is for him or her to see what are the requirements for that um, assignment or what are, what are the resources for that assignment? Is it uh, uh, provided to the student right there on the same page of the assignment? Or does the student need to leave that assignment, go to the orientation module, look for what he's, he's, he's lacking, uh, you know, grammar or references or APA annotations, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so that's the whole idea about course navigation. But I have a, a document that uh, it, it, it shows you detail by detail what each, each one of these elements mean. Because by, by heart, you may not be able to know unit level chunking. What is this? Right? Chunking means just each unit is together. I don't have an assignment that belongs to my unit one into some other places. Uh, page level, page content is not, it's uh, use descriptive headings and subheadings. Headings and subheadings, very, very important with accessibility. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's easy to do that in Canvas. And so on and so forth. I think we have three minutes, which means we can, um, Oh, last one, I promise it's going to be last one. Hold on. Last one is accessibility. Uh, even though accessibility is poker, the poker group, I, I'm probably saying this wrong, is the poker team, uh, they get together uh, to look at accessibility. This is specifically uh, um, done by somebody in IT because most of the things can be fixed uh, with the, the help of IT, right? 
So, but it's also good to know heading styles. Do they have headings? Why? Because headings are important for people with disability. Colors, if the colors are too faded, and et cetera, et cetera. But those are the things that is kind of the roadmap for you to create a Canvas course that is not just engaging, but is also accessible, right? Which is the very important thing for us in uh, college education. Any questions, guys? I'm so happy to be here. And I am, I'm really, you can see by my smile. <laughs> Let me look at the chat. Now I can look at the chat and I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. I have to hop off. I don't see my name in the list of attendees. Thank you, very good presentation. Thank you, thank you. HTML information, I will do that. Ah, you have that already, cool. Hosting Canva workshop. Leslie, Canvas, oh, cool. Yes. Very engaging. All right, guys, thank you so much. If you wanted to stay longer, I would be more than happy to stay, but I don't know if Leslie has to go. Uh, but I'm going to need Leslie two minutes to... Uh, just make sure I know how to give everybody attendance because I was having some issues with my oh, center for resource. Yeah. I'll, I'll take care of that. Gotcha. Yeah. So I'll, I'll use the um, Zoom report and I'll, I'll give everyone uh, credit for attending. Excellent. Thank you so much. Appreciate 